Good afternoon everybody, today's video is about fighting infection so I'm going to be talking about the role of white blood cells, I'm going to be talking about how vaccinations work to stop us getting ill and I'm going to begin by talking about how our body actually prevents us getting ill in the first place because remember in everyday life we are bombarded with pathogens remember pathogens are microorganisms which cause disease such as bacteria or viruses and we might have some going through the air so they're transmitted through the air or in our food if we've eaten a dodgy I don't know, piece of meat or some raw eggs, um, if someone sneezed on us, if anyone's like got something on their skin that's contagious and touched us with it, that sounds gross. But the point is there are pathogens trying to make us ill and the second point is that we're not ill all the time so there must be something stopping us from getting ill. So first of all the obvious things is that our skin acts as a barrier, remember the skin is the largest organ in your body and it literally stops those pathogens entering. The only time it's compromised is if you get cut potentially you could have a pathogen entering at a cut but what do we have there? We have platelets which clot the blood at the site of a wound thus creating a big scab and stopping pathogens entering that way. Alternatively we've got hydrochloric acid, remember that's got a very low pH, um, not many pathogens can deal with that very well so that's going to kill them. We have things such as hairs lining our airways, eyelashes in our ears and our nose, that's going to prevent pathogens getting too far as well. Um, and mucus, mucus traps pathogens because it's sticky. So we have lots of ways in which we stop these horrible things getting into our body, body, but unfortunately sometimes they still enter and that's where our white blood cells come in and our immune system. So there are two types of white blood cell you need to know about. The first type is phagocytes, the second type is lymphocytes. So let's start with phagocytes. Now these are the ones which effectively eat our pathogens. You need to use the word that they ingest or they engulf but those both really mean that they eat them. So they come along, they enclose the pathogen inside them and they create digestive enzymes which destroy the pathogen. Amazing. We also have things called lymphocytes which are slightly more complicated and what they do, they are a white blood cell that recognises specific proteins on the side of pathogens and these proteins are things which are effectively labelled going I'm a cold virus or I'm influenza or I'm TB, okay? So they're literally little markers telling the white blood cells what they are. So you need to say that the lymphocytes recognise antigens on the pathogen and then they produce proteins called antibodies to try and destroy these pathogens. Now they do that in a number of ways. Some of them literally just produce antitoxins which neutralise the toxins produced by the pathogen. Some of the antibodies cause the pathogens to stick together and make them more likely to be eaten or engulfed by the phagocytes and some of them literally just add a label effectively to the pathogen and again make it easier for the phagocytes to find them. Lastly, some of the lymphocytes cause the pathogens themselves to burst open so some of those bacterial cells will pop and obviously that leads to their destruction. But fundamentally you need to know that lymphocytes recognise the antigens on pathogens and they produce antibodies to destroy them. Now let's talk about vaccination. Vaccinations are things that you get when you go on holiday, for example, to a country that has more kind of varied diseases than what we have here and may lead to you getting really ill. So you might have something like a tetanus jab or typhoid or diphtheria or hepatitis. Now what's happening is the nurse or doctor is injecting you with a, and it's important that you know this, it's either a weakened or dead form of that pathogen. So you need to say you are injected with the weakened or dead form of the pathogen or its antigen. At that point what happens is the lymphocytes produce lots of antibodies in response and then some of those lymphocytes produce memory cells and that basically means that if you get reinfected on your holiday or in any other situation you have memory cells there that effectively remember that specific antigen and they can create a huge number of antibodies super quickly and basically those antibodies are produced so fast that your pathogen has no chance of kind of taking grip of you and making you ill, they're totally um, destroyed by this massive onslaught of antibodies and that's a really great way in which you're protected from getting ill. So just to tell you the marks you'll need to provide, you need to talk about the fact a vaccine contains a weakened or dead form of the antigen, then you need to state that lymphocytes produce antibodies that attack the specific pathogen. Some of those lymphocytes turn into memory cells and then if you are reinfected, those memory cells produce antibodies far more quickly in order to destroy the pathogen before it can take hold. But I'm going to attach some questions now. I hope you found this video helpful. Don't forget to subscribe and like it if you want more like this. And I'll see you soon. Bye!
Question 6. White blood cells protect the body against pathogens such as bacteria and viruses. Pathogens make us feel ill, give one reason why, and that's because they produce toxins which damage our cells. Part 2. White blood cells produce antibodies. This is one way white blood cells protect us against pathogens. Give two other ways that white blood cells protect us against pathogens. So obviously don't mention the one that they've uh, mentioned there because that won't get you any marks. You could say that they produce antitoxins or you could say that phagocytes ingest or engulf pathogens. But you don't even need to specify phagocyte if that's a bit too technical. Just say that they also ingest pathogens. Don't say eat, you won't get a mark if you say that. Vaccination can protect us from the diseases pathogens cause. One type of virus causes measles. A doctor vaccinates the child against measles. What does the doctor inject into the child to make the child immune to measles? Measles, and they inject a weakened or dead form of the pathogen. A few weeks after the vaccination, a child becomes infected with measles virus from another person. The graph shows the number of measles antibodies in the child's blood from before the vaccination until the vaccination. More measles antibodies are produced after the infection than after the vaccination. Describe other differences in antibody production after infection compared with after vaccination. So it's a described question. So you need to say what you see from the graph, which makes it fairly straightforward. So you could say, first of all, that after infection, the, the increase you see begins far sooner. You could say that the increase is much steeper. Or you could say that the increase is much longer lasting. And that is after infection compared with after the vaccination. Vaccination against the measles virus will not protect the child against rubella virus. Why? And that's because the antibodies produced are very specific and therefore the antibodies which will destroy rubella will be different to those that will destroy measles. What is the advantage of vaccinating a large proportion of the population against measles? Um, basically, it's going to reduce the spread of infection so it's less likely that you'll get an epidemic. And remember, that's when a huge number of people are infected at the same time and it's, it will be therefore a much more straightforward way of eradicating measles or you could say in order to produce herd immunity which is when a large number of people are immune to a disease. Question 5. People may be immunised against diseases using vaccines. Which part of the vaccine stimulates the body's defence system? And that's the weakened form of the pathogen that you have injected. So you need to say weakened for the first mark and pathogen for the second. A person has been vaccinated against measles. The person comes in contact with the measles pathogen. The person does not catch measles. Explain why. And that's because after you've injected that weakened form of the pathogen, the white blood cells produce antibodies. And remember that because they've already been exposed, the antibodies are produced far more quickly. And what those antibodies do is that they destroy the pathogen. And that's what you need to state for the third mark. A man catches a disease. The man has not been immunised against the disease. A doctor gives the man a course of antibiotics. The graph shows how the number of live disease bacteria in the body changes when the man is taking antibiotics. So we can see that over time, the number of bacteria in the body in billions, gosh, that's a lot, decreases. So where's this question? Four days after starting the course of antibiotics, the man feels well again. It is important that the man does not stop taking the antibiotics. Explain why and use information from the graph. Okay, so we can see that after four days, there is actually still some bacteria in the body. So that's what you need to say for the first mark. And that you could say that they would then reproduce and potentially make the man ill again. Occasionally, a new resistant strain of the pathogen appears. The new strain may spread rapidly. Explain why. And that's, this is when we're getting into antibiotic resistance. Because if there's some mutation in one of the bacteria, they're more likely to survive and they reproduce and then before you know it you've got a whole population made up of resistant bacteria so that's a really really bad thing so for the first mark you need to say that the there are now resistant pathogens that survive you need to say for the second mark that they reproduce and thirdly you need to say that the population of resistant pathogens increases question 12 the immune system responds to infection using white blood cells a phagocyte is one type of white blood cell draw and label a phagocyte you need to make sure that you draw regular animal cells. So that's one with a cell membrane, which you're going to label because it's asked you to. And the crucial thing here is that the nucleus is lobed, which means that it comes in several parts. And it looks a little bit like this. Label that nucleus. And lastly, label the cytoplasm. Give one way that the structure of this cell differs from a red blood cell. And you could say here, that the phagocyte has a nucleus, whereas the red blood cell has no nucleus. You could say that it's not biconcave disc shaped, whereas the red blood cell is biconcave disc shaped. You could say that the red blood cell has hemoglobin, whereas this cell doesn't. Anyway, describe how white blood cells are used by the body to defend against infection, and that's worth five marks. 
you need to use very specialist terms here. So first of all, talk about the fact that the phagocyte engulfs the pathogens. You could say that it produces enzymes which digest and break down the pathogen. Next up, describe a second type of white blood cell, which is the lymphocytes. Remember that they recognize specific antigens and produce antibodies in response to that. And remember that later on they turn into memory cells so that if you're reinfected, they can fight the pathogen very quickly. So first mark is engulf, second mark enzymes, third mark that they break down, fourth mark for mentioning lymphocytes, fifth mark for saying that they produce antibodies which are specific to the particular antigen and that memory cells are produced. So lots of available marks there. Another type of question they may ask you is one like this. So explain how a vaccination will protect a human from having an infection. That's worth three marks. So first up, you need to talk about the fact that the vaccination contains a weakened, dead or inactive form of either the bacteria, the virus, the pathogen or the antigen. It's up to you what you say there. You need to say that memory cells are produced and the antibodies are produced far, far quicker than if there was no vaccination in place. So for the first mark, it's for saying that there's a weakened form of the pathogen. The second mark for stating that memory cells are produced. Third mark, that antibodies are made. And the fourth available mark is for saying that it's far sooner. Thank you.